Hello, everyone. Pastor Jeremiah here. And today is Miracle Monday. And I'm so glad that you decided to tune in. I've been away for a little while and I want to just give uh, thanks to God and thanks to my staff, the pastors that have been coming so faithfully to bring the devotions every week. And I appreciate you uh, hearing from them. They had some great stuff that they brought about some revelation that is really feeding and helping the people of God. And I'm excited to be back and uh, and just excited to break open the word of God with you and for you today. And so, again, today is Miracle Monday and I'm believing and I am speaking that God is going to perform miracles in and through your life, in and through your family. And that your best days, your greatest days are not behind you, but they are ahead of you because you serve a God who is ahead of you. And so thank you so much for viewing today. Um, in just a moment, we're going to break open the word of God and I'm going to bring um, just kind of a, a specific word, some a unique word this week. And uh, I'm calling it storms, shipwrecks and snake bites. And I uh, just really feel the Holy Spirit stirring me uh, in prayer earlier that some people needed to hear this. So I'm just going to sit down with you around the table. and We're going to have a conversation over the word of God. And the Holy Spirit is going to minister to you in a special way because you need to realize that even though I might know, I might not know where you're at. I might not know what you're facing. I might not know what you're going through. I don't even know everyone who is watching, but God does. And God knew that you would be tuning in before you ever thought to tune in and that he has a word designed, ordained. He has a word that has been uh, just specified for your life. And so I want you to turn in your Bibles today to the uh, Acts chapter 27. And um, and if you're having to just listen to this then just listen. And I'm not going to read all of this, but uh, this week, what I'm going to be going over is Acts chapter 27 and Acts chapter 28. And there's a very unique story here. The Apostle Paul, um, he's he's not at the end of his ministry, but he's definitely coming towards the end of his ministry. And the Lord had spoke to the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 23. And he had told him, Paul, you're going to Rome. You're going to stand before uh, the, the authorities in Rome and you're going to declare my gospel to them. And so the Apostle Paul has this promise from God. He has he knows. I mean, Jesus has come to him in a vision. He knows it's of the Lord. And so um, he's he's with this centurion and they they hop on this ship and they're going. They're selling to Rome. But something happens on their way uh, to Rome. And uh, this big storm begins to, to stir. And uh, and all of a sudden, th this is kind of where we're going to pick up in Acts chapter 27. This big storm is happening and the boat is beginning to rock. And the, and the Apostle Paul tried to tell him even before they left out of the harbor. Hey, men, I don't think we need to do this. Um, but but I'm, what I'm wanting you to see uh, is that sometimes, even though it might look like a bad idea, sometimes it might not look like God's in control. But what I'm wanting you to see this week is that God is in control, that even though it might not look good, God is going to turn something good out of it. And so that's where we're going to pick up. And today and, and maybe even tomorrow, we're going to be talking about storms. Now, I want to say this before we get started in this is because a lot of times None of us like storms and all of us are ready to get out of the storm. But God uses storms to do something special in our lives that can't be done through anything else. God uses storms. God uses trials. God uses testings. God uses these unique moments to to uh, cultivate, to grow something in us and through us that can't be done anywhere else. And uh, I mean, just think about it. If the if the apostles, if, if the disciples had never been in a storm, they would not know that walking on water was possible. If if the disciples had never been in a storm, they would not know that they served the God who can calm the storm. See, all of this comes about because you're in a place 
that that you might not like, but God's doing something special in. And so the Apostle Paul is with these guys on this boat, on this ship. He's with a bunch of other prisoners. He's with some centurions and uh, they're on this ship on the way to Rome. And we're in Acts chapter 27. And all of a sudden, this big, this huge storm begins to happen. It begins to rock the boat. It begins to just hit at the boat. And and so I'm going to just begin to pick some things out that the Holy Spirit showed me to communicate to you this week. And I'm going to pray that God has given you an ear to hear and an eye to see and a heart to obey. Because if you can get this, those of you that are going through some tough times right now, those of you that are going through some uncertain times right now, it's going to encourage you. It's going to help you to know that God is still in control of everything you're walking through. When you're a child of God, you need not fear. When you're a child of God, you need not to be dismayed. God has you in the palm of his hand. And so at, at, we're going to pick up and in verse 12. I want you to grab this in verse 12. This is what the Bible says in Acts chapter 27. And because the harbor was not suitable to winter in the in the uh, in the majority uh, and the majority advised to set sail from there. Also, if by any means we could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Creek opening towards the southwest and the northwest and winter there. Now, again, and because the harbor was not suitable to winter in. So first thing I want to talk to you today about is number one is this here. God allows storms to come. Because the place that you're at is not suitable. Now, listen, to this is not suitable for you to stay in. It's not suitable for you to stay in. It's not big enough for you to you to survive in. It's not great enough for you to stay in. It doesn't have the resources for you to live in. It, it, it can't get you to the dream. It can't get you to the vision. It can't get you to the promise that God has given you. And sometimes we because we won't go out ourselves, we won't jump out ourselves. God allows us to get in the midst of the storm right here. God allows us to get in the midst where the waves are crashing and the wind is blowing and the rain is falling. And we're wondering what in the world is going on. And and we're like, God, don't you see? Why did you allow me to do what I'm doing? Why did you allow me? To come to this place, I had it so good back there or I had it. It was peaceful back there. I was comfortable back there. And God is saying, yes, I know. But you must understand that place, that place could not get you to where I'm taking you. That place was not suitable for the call on your life. That place was not suitable for the dream inside of your heart. That place was not suitable. For the harvest that I have in store for you, that place was not suitable for you to reach the top of your potential. And so Paul and them have to set sail from this place because it was not suitable to winter in. And I just believe that there's some of you out there right now and you're looking back on some things and you're saying, God, I obeyed you and I stepped out. I obeyed you and God, I moved by faith into where I'm at. And now all hell is breaking loose. I want you to know some all hell is not breaking loose. All heaven's breaking loose. I want you to know something that you're right in the plan of God there because it was not suitable to keep you. The resources could not get you to where God has taken you. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. God has not stepped off his throne. God has not stopped leading your life just because things may feel and look like um, that they're, they're out of control. Uh, God is still in control. And so if you've moved out, sometimes storms come in our lives. Uh, God allows storms to come in our lives because the place we've been at for so long, that comfortable place, that place that we're so used to being in is not suitable. It's not able. You can't stay there. Because it's not able to take you where God's where God is wanting you to go. And so we read on down and uh, <clears throat> we read on down and we read in verse 18 and 19. And because we were exceedingly tempest tossed, the next day they lightened the ship. And on the third day, we threw the ship's tackle overboard with our hands. The second reason God allows storms to come in your life. He allows storms to come in your life. 
so that you can get rid of some stuff that does not matter. Or you can get rid of some stuff that's going to weigh you down. You can get rid of some stuff that's going to take you out. And sometimes the only reason and the only way that we will begin to evaluate our spiritual growth, we'll begin to evaluate and really look at where we're at with God is when things are uncomfortable. When storms begin to rage, have you ever figured out and have you ever realized that when you're in a and when you're in a time of testing, when you're in a trial, when you're in a storm, have you ever realized you begin to look or take a closer look at your life, at your walk with God, at your relationship with your family, at your relationship with your church? You begin to take a closer look at your devotion, your Bible reading, your prayer. You begin to take a, a closer look at how you're treating people, how people are treating you. You begin to take a closer look at who you really are in Christ. And that is God's plan. Because sometimes, and we don't even realize that we're doing it. We don't even realize that sometimes through life and through situations and through circumstance, we have picked up certain stuff. Stuff that you know, it's OK. It isn't like it's going to send us to hell, but it's stuff that really don't matter a whole lot. It's stuff that we really don't need. And it's stuff that when the storm comes, it can cause us to sink. And the Bible tells us that when Paul and uh, and the other guys on the ship, when this thing, when this ship began to almost sink, they began to throw over some stuff. They begin to throw over the tackle. They begin to throw over. Um, they begin to throw over uh, all kinds of stuff that was on it to lighten the ship up. And sometimes God allows storms in our lives. Listen to me. They allow they, he allows storms in your life so that you begin to say, you know, I really don't need that. I really don't need to be doing that. I really don't need this because this weighs me down. You know what? And this is taken away from my time of being able to serve in the kingdom. This is taken away from my time of being able to fellowship with the saints in the church and come on a regular basis. This is causing me not to be able to give like I could give. This is causing me where I really don't have a faithful prayer life. This is causing me to where my marriage really isn't stable. And so I'm going to get rid of this stuff. I'm going to throw this stuff overboard. And, you know, sometimes I'm, and it, it isn't the case here in, in this story, but sometimes when we throw the stuff overboard, I have found in a few uh, experiences in my life, when I got rid of it, the storm stopped. When I got rid of it, the storm stopped, just like with Jonah, when they threw him overboard, guess what happened? The storm ceased because it was God's plan the whole time. And beloved, I, I, today I'm, I'm about to pray for you just in a moment because I sense there are people walking through some storms right now. And we don't see we're wondering how in the world can God get any glory out of this? How in the world can God be leading me in this way? I want you to know this storm did not take that Paul and these guys were in. It did not take them. It did not take God by surprise. It took them by surprise. It did not take God by surprise. God had a plan the whole time. And you're going to see that tomorrow. God had a plan the whole time. He had a whole time. He was using the storm. He was using the difficulties. He was using the trials to bring them to a destination. He was using it to fulfill his plan, his purpose and his promise. And so today I want you to be encouraged because I know that if you're walking through a storm right now, you're evaluating your life. You're evaluating your walk with Christ. You're evaluating your relationship with your family. You're evaluating your spiritual maturity. You're evaluating, am I growing in the Lord or not? Because that's what storms do. And you're evaluating, what do I really need this in my life or not? I want to pray for you. And I want to pray that God would help you, that your faith would remain. And that by the sovereign, by the sovereign anointing of the Holy Spirit today, that God would bring peace to you. That God would bring help to you and that the Lord would speak to you and let you know that he's got it all under control. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my dear brothers and sisters.
I pray for Amy. There's a lady watching by the name of Amy. You have went through a hard time with your children. And right now you're wondering, does God even care? Does God even love me because of what you've been facing? And Amy, I want you to know today that God does love you and God does care for you. And right now that God has allowed this to happen in your life, because at the end of this broadcast, you're about to cry out to him. You're about to you're about to call on the name of the Lord. And guess what? God's going to answer you. And that as you begin to grow in the Lord, God's going to restore everything that the devil has stolen. God's going to restore it. The storm that you're facing today was to bring you to this moment, Amy, so you would call out on the name of the Lord. Father, I pray for all my dear brothers and sisters watching. I pray for Amy. I pray for many others that are in storms right now, wondering and asking. And some are even, God, doubting. Do you even know where I'm at? Do you even know what I'm in, God? Have you forgotten about me? And Lord, I pray today that the devil would be made out to be, that he would be revealed what he really is, and that is a liar. And Father, I ask in Jesus' name that there would be a, a sovereign anointed peace that would rest on the people watching and listening right now. And God, I pray that the help and the hand of your spirit would help them along the way. God, I ask that your, their faith would remain in every season. And I thank you for this, Father, and I believe you for this. In the strong name of your son, Jesus, I ask and believe I've received now. And I thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for watching today, beloved. Listen, don't miss one of these broadcasts this week because each one is going to continue to, to, to build upon the other. And the Holy Spirit is going to minister in a special way this week. And I don't want you to miss it. Your breakthrough is on the way. We love you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. And I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless. Thank you for tuning in to the Abundant Life devotional series. These devotions are available across many platforms, including our Abundant Life Revival Network YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at We Are ALRC for this and other great content. If you are in the South Atlanta area or the North Macon and Forsyth areas, we would love for you to come visit one of our campuses. You can find all the information you need at AbundantLifeChurch.com. My name is Jennifer, I am Overflow, and I am Abundant Life Church.